Have you ever looked at the back of your toothpaste tube and wondered what all those ingredients are for? Let's talk. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to talk about toothpaste. And before diving into each ingredient, it's helpful to first mention the ADA seal of acceptance. This seal from the American Dental Association guarantees that the toothpaste has been tested for safety and proven effective for cavity prevention and overall oral health. So if a toothpaste has this seal, then you know it's safe and it works. You don't have to worry about all the ingredients. However, if a toothpaste that you like doesn't have the ADA seal, no worries. It doesn't mean it's bad. It might just be going through the approval process, which can take years. So for toothpastes without the ADA seal, that's when you really wanna look into the ingredients listed on the tube. And the main reason we use toothpaste is to prevent cavities. And fluoride is the gold standard ingredient for cavity prevention. There are three types of fluoride commonly found in toothpaste, including sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride, and sodium monofluorophosphate. Fluoride strengthens tooth enamel, making it more resistant to acids from bacteria in your mouth. It also helps remineralize weak spots of enamel before they turn into full-blown cavities. So when you're looking at toothpaste and ingredients, you want to make sure it contains some type of fluoride to best benefit your dental health. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about fluoride, so let's be clear. Fluoride at the levels found in toothpaste is safe and effective. Concerns about fluoride toxicity stem from exposure to extremely high levels, which are far beyond what's found in your daily toothpaste. We are not exposed to those levels that would cause any harm. Having said that, I will link my fluoride safety videos along with sources in the description box below if you'd like to learn more. I use fluoride and I recommend fluoride to not only my patients, but also to all my friends and family. Okay, back to this video. Another cavity protection ingredient is called nanohydroxyapatite, which may be a promising alternative to fluoride. It mimics the minerals in tooth enamel and helps remineralize teeth. However, this is a big however. It doesn't offer the same acid resistance as fluoride, so it's not as good as preventing cavities. And it isn't ADA nor FDA approved. So without having any regulatory approvals, you won't know for sure that the toothpaste tube saying it contains nanohydroxyapatite will do what it claims to do. You also won't know for sure that the toothpaste is actually using nanoparticles and not microparticles or some other sized particles. So while research is promising regarding nanoparticles in toothpaste, the research is so new compared to fluoride. So we aren't sure about all the pros and cons of what happens if it contains something other than nanoparticles. And without it being regulated, that can happen. So until then, it's best to always use fluoride toothpaste since it's regulated. If you're still concerned, always talk with your personal dentist and or dental hygienist. Some other other ingredients in toothpaste include xylitol, which is a sugar substitute that helps repel plaque and maintain a neutral pH in the mouth. While it's a great addition for cavity prevention, xylitol alone usually isn't enough to prevent cavities. It's best paired with fluoride. Pyrophosphates. These are found in tartar control toothpastes. They are ingredients that help reduce tartar buildup. However, nothing beats proper brushing and flossing techniques, the manual removal of plaque for tartar prevention. So make sure you're brushing and flossing correctly. That's more important than using a tartar control toothpaste. Next, desensitizers such as potassium nitrate. These are commonly used in sensitivity toothpaste. They work by blocking the pathways to nerves in your teeth, reducing sensitivity over time. Peroxides such as hydrogen peroxide or carbamide peroxide. These are found in whitening toothpastes and they are ingredients that help prevent surface stains, making your teeth appear brighter. Be cautious if you have sensitive teeth though because whitening agents can make sensitivity worse. Abrasives such as calcium carbonate and dehydrated silica gels, they help polish teeth and help reduce surface stains on enamel. Thickening agents or binders such as mineral or seaweed colloids, natural gums, or synthetic cellulose may be included in toothpaste formulations to stabilize the product. Humectants such as sorbitol, glycol, and glycerol, they help keep the toothpaste from hardening or drying up. Detergents such as sodium lauryl sulfate, aka SLS, which helps make the toothpaste foamy and to allow the active ingredients to properly clean teeth. I do have a video all about about SLS since it can be an irritant to some people's mouths. So I'll link that video of mine below if you'd like to learn more. And lastly, flavors. These are sweeteners that do not contain sugar, but they make your toothpaste taste pleasant. It's important to note that essential oils, including spearmint, peppermint, and cinnamon are also among ingredients that may cause irritants or allergies in some people's mouths. And one more note on this, flavors like spearmint or cinnamon, they may or may not be mentioned by name on the packaging. They might just be under the unspecified 
specified word of flavors. So if a toothpaste is bothering your mouth, be sure to check the flavoring and try a different flavor next time. But in my personal experience, it's usually the SLS that bothers people first. If it's not that, then check the flavoring. In conclusion, toothpaste isn't a one size fits all product. Whether you're looking for cavity protection, everyone should look for cavity protection. But some people may also be looking for sensitivity relief or tartar control. Whatever you're looking for, there will be a toothpaste that fits your needs. Know that everyone can benefit from a cavity protection toothpaste. And if you need any additional ingredients, then you can choose whatever else will fit your needs. But overall, the best toothpaste to use is the one you'll use consistently. If you like the taste of it, you're more likely to brush for the full two minutes twice each day every single day. And speaking of using it consistently, please know that if there was ever a secret to oral health, it's consistency. Staying on routine is everything and toothbrushing apps like Better Mouth can help you with this, providing features like the mouth score and daily streaks to allow you to monitor your brushing habits and ensure you're doing everything right to protect your teeth and stay on routine. But routine and consistency ain't nothing if you're using improper techniques, such as flossing wrong or using your electric toothbrush incorrectly. So if you're interested in perfecting your oral care routine at home, check out my free oral care guide linked below. I made this video guide to help you properly brush, floss, use a tongue scraper, and more. And I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And until next time, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.